Hi there, in today's video you will understand how do the flaps affect your takeoff run required, okay? You will understand what happened, why a different flap setting for takeoff will change your takeoff run required and when you should use a lower or a higher flap setting for takeoff. On top of that, we're gonna talk about the takeoff flap range. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. V1 rotates. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from pilotclimb.com. I help you to become a better pilot. So if this is what you want to do, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to support my job, please give it a like to the video. So let's talk about how do the flaps affect your takeoff run required, okay? So the higher the flap, the shorter will be your takeoff run, as long as you stay within the takeoff flap range, okay? So if you take two aircraft with the same weight, okay, and you've use a, a takeoff flap setting that is lower, okay, in one case, and a takeoff flap setting that is higher, in another example, you will see that the one that has got more flap extended, that's got an higher flap setting, will rotate earlier than, a take, than an aircraft that has got a lower flap setting, okay? Why is that? It's because by increasing the flap, you're increasing your cord line and you increase your coefficient of lift. Thus, what happens with a wing that has got an higher flap setting, and we are talking about always staying within the takeoff range, okay, the flap takeoff range, okay? A wing that has got an higher flap setting will produce an higher coefficient of lift. By producing an higher coefficient of lift, it will reduce the stall speed and it will reduce the rotation speed. Thus, if you take off with a wing that has got an higher flap setting, you can actually perform the rotation at a lower speed. Okay, so now if you imagine an aircraft with a higher flap setting compared, and you compare this aircraft to an aircraft that has got a lower flap setting, you will see that for the same weight, the same aircraft, only changing the flap setting, you will see that the aircraft with an higher flap setting will rotate earlier, okay? So now, it is very important to understand, guys, that we are talking about the takeoff flap range, okay? This, because the airliners, okay, normally, they have a takeoff flap range. In the Boeing 737-800, that's the aircraft that have been flying for 12 years, this takeoff flap range is the flap that goes from flap one all the way down to flap 25, okay? But why we have this takeoff flap range? We've got this takeoff flap range because outside, if you use the, the, take, the flaps for takeoff outside this range, your wing won't produce enough, enough coefficient of lift or will produce too much drag. So let, let me make a few examples in order to make sure that this is clear. So in the Boeing 737, we said that the takeoff flap range is from flap one through flap 25, usually, okay? There's some operators that I think they use from flap one to flap 15, but normally the Boeing 737-800 has got the takeoff flap range. You can use the flaps for takeoff from flap one all the way down to flap 25, okay? Let's make an example. Today, I want to use flap up, okay? If you compare a takeoff with flap up, what will happen is that the, the, the wing will produce a coefficient of lift that is quite low. By producing a low coefficient of lift, the stall speed is gonna be very high, will be very high the stall speed. Thus, the rotation speed, the V1 speed and the V2 speed will be very high. Thus, your takeoff run will be very, very long. Okay, that's why we don't normally use the flap up and it's outside the takeoff range. So if you think about flap 30, 40 now, okay, Okay, with flap 340 there are flaps setting for landings, okay? You're gonna have a maximum flap extending on your, on your wing, okay? Your trailing edge flap will be extending to the maximum position. If you take away this flap setting, you're gonna produce a lot of drag. So the drag penalty is gonna be very high compared to the coefficient of lift benefits that you're gonna get by using flap 30 and 40. Okay, that's why we don't use flap 30 and 40 for takeoff. They are outside the takeoff range of the flap 30 and 40. Okay, so what happened is that at, in the case of the Boeing 737-800, they made flight tests, okay, they checked the different takeoff runs, okay, the different takeoff runs with different flap settings, and they saw that the best flap range was from flap 1 to flap 25. In the case of the Boeing 737-800, we usually take off with flap 5 because it's the best flap setting that gives you a, a short takeoff run and good takeoff uh, climb performances after you rotate, okay? Because in a separate video, I will make a video about how does the flap affect your takeoff climb performances, okay? But now we are only talking about the takeoff 
run okay so now you can say okay Gabriel perfect thank you very much everything is clear but when do I actually use a lower flap or a higher flap setting for takeoff okay you want to use an, an higher flap setting for takeoff so in the case of the Boeing 737 flap 25 for, for example when you need to reach your rotation speed okay your rotation speed as soon as possible when you have a short runway so you need to be able to get airborne as soon as possible okay so if you are limited by the runway length so if you have a short runway you want to use flap 25 okay if you if you have a long if you have a long runway you you might use flap one flap five and so on okay so the longer the runway the lower will be the, the takeoff flap setting that you can use however in the case of the Boeing 737 as 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 I said we normally use flap five even if the run, runway is super long okay so guys as you can see depending on the situation what we do we actually on the day of the flight we check the performance of for that specific runway and weather conditions so if the runway is short or you have a very bad weather with the low pressure tailwind and so on you check the performance and you try to figure it out what is the best flap setting for that specific takeoff in fact when you are actually calculating the performances of the Boeing 737 if you change the values flap setting that you can use so as as i said flap one for example you go in the fmc and you set flap one you will see that the v1 vr and v2 numbers they are they have a specific number if you set flap five you will see that the v1 vr and v2 will be lower because your stall speed is uh, lower thus your rotation speed is low is lower the, your v1 is lower in your v2 if you set flap 15 for example you will see that the, this speed then go down even farther because you are increasing the coefficient of lift of the wing and you are reducing the stall speed for a small drag penalty okay then, then as we said if you go to flat 30 and 40 which you cannot use because you are outside the takeoff range your drag penalty is going to be enormous okay compared to the gaining in coefficient to lift that is pretty much zero okay guys i hope you now understand a bit better how the flaps affect your takeoff run and when you can use an higher or a lower flap setting if you still have any questions leave a comment below and then i will help you out also go to pilotclimb.com where you can book a private pilot training session with me i wish you a great day and i'll see you in the next one